हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नीताय गौरंगा नीताय गौरंगा नीताय गौरंगा नीताय गौरंगा नीताय गौरंगा नीताय गौरंगा नीताय गौरंगो नीताय गौरंगा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे बोलो हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे 
हरे रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे हे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे बोलो बोलो हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Vaishnav Thakur, Jaya Vaishnav Thakur Jaya Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur Jaya Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur Jaya Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur Jaya Vaishnava Thakur, Vaishnava Thakur Jaya Prabhupada, Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada, Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada, Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada, Prabhupada Jaya Vaishnava Thakur, Vaishnava Thakur 
دیا باش نف تکار باش نف تکار هری بال هری بال هری بان تگارا هری بان تگارا هری با نی تگار هری بال هری با هری بان تگارا هری بال Shila Prabhu Padke, His Grace Janikanath Prabhu Ke, His Holiness Chandramoli Swami Maharaj Ke, Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ke. Hare Krishna. That's what we would say when he goes into a room. Come on, a little bit louder, a little bit louder. One more time. One, two, three. Okay, now it's, now it's his memorial. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for everyone for coming. Uh, a warm welcome to all the devotees here, especially Jankinath Prabhu's parents and family um, that are here as well. And today, you know, when we think of Jankinath Prabhu, as we can see um, his pictures, he has a very infectious smile, isn't it? Like as soon as you think of Jankinath, you're just thinking, I want to be with him. I, you know, instantly you start smiling about the memories with him, the joy that he's brought to us as well. So today we'll be sharing, celebrating very much a lot of his life and the love that he's given to us, the teachings that he's given to us and the times that we've had with him. So we will also have His Holiness Chandra Muli Maharaj um, coming and speaking later on as well. And various devotees who have all um, had a lot of very sweet times with him as well. But to start off the evening, we would like to ask our temple president, Mother Vishaka, um, to come and address us and say a few words today. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharane Nirvase Sasunyavadi Paskya Tadesha Tarane Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vansha Kalpa Tarubhyas Cha, Kripa Sindhu Vyeva Cha, Patita Nam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo, Namo Nama. So thank you so much for being here to celebrate the life of this extraordinary personality, the smiling monk. We have so much to learn from him, so much to remember about him, to inspire us to follow in his footsteps, to take his example to heart, that despite so many physical difficulties, he remained the smiling monk, always positive, always wanting to hear about the devotees, about Krishna. So we're so fortunate that Srila Prabhupada has enabled us to have this family of devotees. Zanaki Nath Prabhu was an exemplary devotee that we can celebrate his life and keep him alive in our own lives as a great source of inspiration. So thank you for being here, especially thanks to his family. Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Mother Vishaka. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but we often named Jankinath Prabhu the smiling monk, but there were some pictures that I've never seen before, and pretty much in every single picture, Jankinath Prabhu, or affectionately known as JD, was always smiling. Apart from the pictures, he was eating something or sleeping, right? If he wasn't eating, if he wasn't sleeping, he was always smiling and he was a, an exemplar of happiness. So uh, those are really beautiful to see. So we've got a number of um, friends and family members also to speak some pastimes, some experiences, some lessons that we perhaps learned from JD's life. Um, so we have a number of speakers which I'll invite shortly. Uh, we'll start off with Ananta Acharya Prabhu. Is Ananta Acharya Prabhu here? Yes, thank you. 
please uh, you take the seat. We'll get started, yeah? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hare Krishna Panchakalpa Tanubhyasa Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Patitana Bhavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namo Namaha My obeisances to all the senior Vaishnavas, uh, friends and family of Jankinat Prabhu. Uh, somehow I've been given the hot seat first. Um, so I'm going to keep it very brief because I know time is um, of the essence. But I wanted to share a few things about um, our early days serving Chandramoli Swami. So a few things come to mind. So in the early days, I've got a few notes, just to keep it concise. So in the early days, there was just a few of us boys. There was me, there was uh, Chandramoli Maharaj's disciple, Raghupati Raga, Rupa Manohar. And uh, uh, I'd been serving Chandramoli Maharaj as his servant for a number of years. And then Jan Kinat and Raghupati came. And for those of you that don't know, Jan Kinat and Raghupati were Maharaj's first disciples here, UK disciples, British disciples. And uh, although they were dear friends of mine, somehow or other Maharaj gave me the task and he said, I want you to train these boys. And I said, how do I train them? They're my friends. <laughs> and so I was fortunate to be with them, serving Maharaj for uh, many years. And uh, as we know, uh, Jan Kinat was always very uh, sincere, but in those days especially, he was also well known for uh, spacing out sometimes, uh, for being very forgetful and leaving quite a lot of arrangements uh, for the last minute. And uh, because of this forgetfulness, Jan Kinat would always, would sometimes get some of us on his case. And he'd also get some sweet uh, chastisement from his spiritual master. <laughs> so I wanted to share one of the first sort of remembrances I have of Chanakina and Chandramali Swami. So we were up in the, I think it's still called the patron's room. Maybe it's called something else now. And uh, Chanakina, it was one of the first trips that Chanakina was serving Maharaj. And uh, if I remember rightly, he'd forgotten to do Maharaj's laundry. And Maharaj, as you know, Chandramoli Maharaj is very, very sweet, very kind. But on this day, Maharaj got really heavy. He got some really heavy chastisement. And uh, off Chan Kinat went to do Maharaj's laundry. And then Chandramoli Swami said to me, he goes, what to do? I have to play the role of the spiritual master but now you can go and pacify him. And this is the one of the qualities of Jankina, that even if he got chastised, he'll be like, wow, that was amazing. You know? <laughs> and you're like, you what? You just got really told off. Or, you know, we just got on your case. But he really did want to experience, you know, every kind of loving exchange that was possible. You know? And... You know, when many of us were younger, we couldn't take chastisement. But he could, very early on, he could recognize that, that you know, even chastisement was, you know, a loving exchange. Um, the thing about Jankina, as we know, he was always very optimistic. And sometimes over-optimistic. But the thing about his optimism is it, was, it wasn't driven by ego. He actually had so much faith in Krishna. Right? He'd put us, the rest of us in soup in the meantime. <laughs> but, you know, he really had so much faith in Krishna. One, I'm only going to tell two stories today. One final story is uh, one time Maharaj was coming to the UK and previously he had some issues getting into the country. 
So this one time Marge uh, decided that he would come in Western clothes. And so the plan was John Kinnat was going to drive from the, uh, from the manor to his home, pick up a suitcase, <laughs> and uh, come to South London, where Marge would often come and stay at my family home. And John Kinnat comes. I think you can guess where this story is going. There was no suitcase. And Marge comes to our home in trousers and a kurta, and he's got to give a class at ISKCON London at Soho Street in literally a few hours. And Jankina is like, no problem, no problem. I'll get on a train. I'll go to Wembley. I'll be back. And we're like, Jankina, are you actually listening to what you're saying? This actually doesn't make sense. And then he's like, oh, yeah, it doesn't, does it? You know? So anyway, to speed up the story, you know, we made some phone calls. Marge is trying to get some brahmacharis clothes, etc. And just to give you an example of his confidence in Krishna, and not only things would work out, but they would work out in the most like magical, mystical way. And I said to my father, I said, um, come over here. We went upstairs. We looked in our loft, and we had a box of sannyas clothes that belonged to my father's spiritual master. And uh, we came down, and they were freshly washed, everything packed really nicely. And we came down, and we presented them to Maharaj. And Maharaj was, said to my father, you, is there something you want to tell me? But then he said, you have everything in your home uh, needed for Krishna consciousness. And so, yeah, it's just another example. So obviously, you could have seen Janakinath's face. He was like, saved again, saved again, you know? Um, but yeah, he just had this, you know, uncanny, you know, ability to just bring calmness. We would get stressed, but he wouldn't be stressed at all. Um, and for Janakinath, there was nothing higher than uh, service of the Vaishnavas and seeing devotees, you know, ge genuinely happy. And he did this like with such ease, and he did it always. And uh, finally, you know, I just wanted to say in conclusion, there are many, many more stories. Jankina would often accompany Maharaj to our home. He learned many things in the early days of how to serve his spiritual master, Chandramoli Swami, like cooking and cleaning. Um, and I'm just going to say this much in to finish. Jan Kinnat Prabhu, I feel you tricked me a bit because for that time you made me somewhat of a senior, in, uh, put me in somewhat of a senior capacity uh, in helping you serve your beloved Guru Maharaj. You really did want to experience every exchange and love that came from encouragement but even correction that led to so much growth in your life. In time, you really did become an ideal disciple in so many ways, but especially with your mood. All glories to you, Jankina. I love you very much. You continue to inspire me every day. Your servant, Ananta Charidas. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, a huge thank you to Ananta Charya Prabhu. Um, one for training up Jankinath Prabhu. <laughs> but um, actually, when, whilst he was speaking, it was making me remember a lot of times when I saw Jankinath Prabhu with his spiritual master, as he was saying. And there was a lot of like very inconceivable love that was there, let's say. But many times, um, as we know, he was a magician in many different ways, but he would do many special things. Once, um, I was with him, I was helping him, and Maharaj said, you know, learn how to cook from him. And it was impossible. Like, when he was in the kitchen, I don't know what he was throwing, I don't know if he knew what he was throwing in, but somehow it would come out with the most amazing meal that was there, the most amazing prashadam that was there. And once we were actually, so... Anyway, we, we were in this uh, hotel, this famous hotel, and 
we only got to two people. But there's three of us with this group. So I think I think so we had the three gentlemen in it. And then at that point he snuck in all these vegetables and everything. And at one AM in the morning we got a call from the reception saying there's seagulls outside your room. Like what's going on in your room? And he had put all the vegetables outside because we didn't have a fridge and anything like that. <laughs> And then somehow, I don't know how he was making any pashadam, because we had a small room, there's three of us in it. And somehow or another, he was making soups, he was making like all these subjis, and it was just so magical to see what he was he was coming out with. But that's his sincerity to want to serve all of us. Um, now we will humbly ask His Holiness Chandramuli Maharaj, who is Jankinath's beloved uh, spiritual master. He has just come. Um, so we'll kindly ask Maharaj to address us and say a few words once he's ready. His Holiness Chandramuli Maharaj Ki! Okay, so um, we'll have Maraj addressing us a, a little later. Um, so we're going to ask a dear, a very dear friend who's also very uh, got a very humorous side to him as well, and who spent many years with Jankinath Puru in the Brahmachari Ashram here. Um, very jovial personalities they were together. So we're going to ask um, Niskinchen Jaitanya Prabhu to please address us as well. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Sorry, this this stage is a bit rickety and it's quite narrow actually. So I'm like, I'm a bit on edge just sitting here actually. Um, I'm also even more on edge because I was hoping that I would I would, I, I would actually said to Narasimha Nam at the beginning that you know what, I'm having second thoughts about saying anything because I actually don't have anything to say. I mean, I love you, JD, but I really don't know what to say. And um, and he said, no, just come from the heart. And then obviously Marge came in. So I thought Marge will, you know, kind of take over the program. But somehow I find myself here uh, thinking of what to say in front of such an august assembly here. Um, it also doesn't help that Shesha put me up as someone who's humorous because it means there's expectation <laughs> that I'm going to say something funny. And I, and I really don't actually have anything funny to say, um, except for just being funny, obviously you know, like laughing at me as opposed to with me. So, um, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't even, I mean, I've shared some pastimes, you know, obviously the year when JD left. And, um, yeah, there has been obviously various pastimes of the years, but nothing um, specific that I feel like I want to share right now, except for the, I guess, the feelings that I have. Um yeah, I've been the JD. I feel a lot more youthful actually uh, when, from the ashram because the years are rolling on. I'm 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 older now. I feel older, and uh, you know, as you get older, responsibilities come. When I was in the ashram with JD, it's uh, more like a it seemed like a more of a happy-go-lucky time. Didn't have so much accountability. We just kind of did our thing. It was very an adventurous time actually. 
whenever he wanted to, would just go off, do programs here and there, stay at the base. I think I remember Sham Gopal Prabhu and Kishan. You guys were young, young lads then at the base. We used to stay there and then, um, you know, come back early in the you know, morning. I remember actually JD used to share with me how nice it is to drive through London in the early hours. London generally is quite, it's a hellish place to drive, but in the early hours when there's no traffic, it's the best. I remember JD used to like that. We used to drive back when just when the sun was rising, back to the manor, you know, after a night of preaching and things. So that was really good. Um, I actually, I remember when JD left, we had a memorial event in the Bhakti Lounge. And I said at that time that I sensed that as years go by, we may miss him more than we did even at the time he left. So I can confirm for myself that's definitely the case. I'm missing his presence. H him and also, actually, if I may say, Shruti Dharma Prabhu as well. I feel their absence more now, not just in a pers on a personal level, but also in terms of like the qualities that they brought to the Yatra, to the community. Um, sometimes even in my own services, and I think, oh, gosh, it's like, how do we sort this? And I think, you know, if it's someone like JD or Janaki Nath Prabhu was here, he'd know what to do here. Sometimes I wish I could seek his counsel, or even better, dump the service on him so he can deal with it. You know, that probably would have been good. But um, no, and then I sometimes also think that JD's probably looking down on us and just laughing at us as well, as we kind of like go through all the issues that comes with management and services. Um, but yeah, Janika Nath Prabhu, I'm missing you more and more as the years go by. Um, never really got to actually associate with you after changing ashram. It would have been nice having you come visit our house. You know, we'd cook for you and just, you know, just have a good time talking to you. But hopefully, uh, <laughs> whenever I, you know, I make it back, back up there, then maybe I can, uh, you know, have that time with you then to chill with you. Um, I remember once we were having a, um, a re retreat in, um, I think it was Croatia, actually. Um, no. Was it Croatia? No, uh, yeah, it was Croatia. It was Croatia and we went on a paintballing um, day out. So this is what brahmacharis do, they go on paintballing. No, I'm just joking. We do actually do Krishna conscious work as well, you know. But yeah, anyway, um, but no, I remember, yeah, we went on a paintballing and um, I remember at that time there was one devotee that couldn't say my name properly. And, I was, and he was a constant, even though I corrected him a few times, and he just couldn't say my name properly. And then at one point, I just lost my rag. And then I started flipping out on him. And I remember afterwards, actually, JD pulled me aside. And he just says to me, that, look, Nandan, you know what? You need to calm down. You can't just flip out on people like that. You don't know who these people are that you're serving with and who's sitting next to you. And even though I've heard it before in classes, but when he said it to me, it took an extra resonance. And from that point onwards, I try to be as careful as I can not to switch on devotees, or anyone for that matter. So I'd like to thank JD for that, because I think he really showed me the value of just, yeah, just valuing people and not actually, you know, being careful in my interactions with everyone. And I saw that in, with JD as well, that, you know, we talk about him being the smiling monk. I've seen him actually receive... You know, on one hand, I know we all love him and, you know, everyone, you know, loves him and, and, and so it should be. But, you know, J J JD has, like, received source as well over the years. You know, I I've seen devotees, like, switch on him and, you know, really, like, you know, just vent on him and things like that. But the way, and if I was thinking to myself, that if that was me, I would have actually probably, you know, hit back and, like, thought, okay, look, if you're good enough to give it, are you good enough to get it, you know? But then I look at JD's example and how equipoised he's been. On one hand, he's very smiley, very jolly, but he's actually very like mentally in control of himself. I've never ever really seen JD ever get fried out with anything. I've, you know, in all the years I've lived with him and seen him interact in different situations, I've seen someone say to him, "I hate you," you know, out of anger. I don't think they meant it, but you know, they said it. And you know, JD just received it with a with a smile and actually ended up pacifying pacifying that person where they ended up loving him afterwards. And I think to myself, that is such an amazing quality to have 
um, just to get through life, you know. So I think there are so many different qualities we can learn and learn from, from JD. And, you know, obviously he's a magician, but he brought magic into people's lives um, in so many ways. But also his character itself is so magical. Um, I sometimes wonder what he's doing, actually, right now. Whether he's, I don't know if he's there, or up there, or if he's on another planet doing some sort of mission. Um, who knows? But, yeah, I just think that, you know, that he that that verse where it says, Mata sparsas tu konte asitos na suka duka da. Where I actually taking the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and just treating it like the changing of the seasons. For me, Janaki Nath really exemplified that. And that's something that, even after all these years, is something that I'm also trying to learn from. So that's my, I guess, my own takeaway point from today, that if I can ask JD to please impart and bless me with that quality that I think I'll need uh, as we go forward in our own devotional journeys. And also, uh, yeah, just keep giving us the enthusiasm uh, that we can go forward. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hey, Christ, Janikana, Das Brahmachari, Prabhuji, Ki. Thank you, Nishkinchen and Shaitanya Prabhu. Um, just as you were speaking, I was thinking about a particular um, a particular event that happened when myself and Janikana Prabhu one evening, we were at one devotee's uh, house. We were doing a program there. <clears throat> and uh, these particular devotees were quite rebellious, naturally. They're quite rebellious individuals. And myself and Jan Kinapru Jan took me, said, let's go, we'll do a program there, we'll have some prasadam, and then we'll come back. I said, okay, okay, no problem. So we went to this program, and Jan Kinapru was giving a talk, and you know, it was a little bit challenging, as you can imagine, when you have a very rebellious audience, it can sometimes uh, be quite challenging to, to teach. But anyway, the program happened, we took some prasadam, and we were just about to leave. And as we were at the doorway, uh, this one individual who was saying bye to us was saying some insults to Janakinapu, was insulting him, saying some mean things, perhaps in a joking manner, but they came across quite serious. Yeah. And in my mind, I was watching this happen, and this individual was insulting Janakinapu, and Janakinapu was standing right next to me, we were just about to leave. In my mind, I was like, who are you to say such things to him? In my mind, my fist was getting ready. But I looked at Jankinath and I was perplexed in what I was seeing because all of these comments I could see weren't actually entering Jankinath Prabhu's consciousness. All he was meditating on, all he was thinking about is what can I now do to help this person? What can I now do to help this person in the next step of their spiritual life? He wasn't thinking, how rude is this person? How bad is this person? How, who, is this, who, am, who is this person to say anything to me? He was always thinking about how he can respond. So this person was insulting, insulting. And the next thing, the way Jan Kinapra responded, he didn't actually acknowledge anything the individual said. And he just uh, advised them on what they could do amazing in the program to make a better experience for the people and for them. He was always switching any situation uh, into a positive situation of upliftment. As you've probably seen Jan Kinapra's TEDx talk on YouTube, and its title is infamously titled, There Is No Negativity. And I was actually thinking about that this morning when I was thinking about Jankinath Prabhu and I was thinking, actually, for Jankinath, there was no negativity. Every chastisement, every argument, every insult, every mishap, uh, when things go wrong, it's not wrong. There was no negative situation because he always learned from something. And that's something I definitely took away from him. So next up, uh, we have another individual, another devotee. We have Achyuta Prabhu. So, Chita Prabhu, would you like kindly come up and share some thoughts? Hare Krishna. Um, so, I'm... <clears throat> kind of in the same boat as Nishkinchen. I, I just, I don't know what to say. It's, uh, I feel like anything I would say would um, do him. Is it not loud enough? Yes, sir. Is that good? Okay. 
I feel like anything I would say would wouldn't do him justice because it's uh, he was um, he was really really inspiring. Um, everything you guys have been saying about him being a person that I, I never saw him get angry at someone or um, kind of fight back um, to to um, attack back because someone's been mean to him or um, or rude to him. So yeah, I, I I always remember helping him with his preaching program. So I used to tag along with him to go to different university programs. And um, I remember the, the talks he used to give. I used to make his slides um, while he was driving, which was very unsafe. Um, so he was driving and he'd been doing 10 million things in the morning. And he was like, okay, Chuta, we've got to go for this um, university program in Cambridge. And he would be looking at the laptop and say, yeah, do that. And I'd be typing and putting stuff on there as he was driving and he'd look at the slides. Um, complete kind of Krishna insurance style because it's not, it's not safe. And, um, and I remember serving Chandramoli Maharaj uh, under his uh, supervision. And he was extremely, extremely caring. He would always ask me how I'm feeling and how I'm doing and um, what I'm thinking about and how I can uh, kind of improve my um, mood of service, how um, the areas that I'm struggling with. And um, he really was an integral part of me being in the ashram. Um, and, and I feel like the number of years that I was there, a, a huge part of it was because of Janaki. That's because he was such a just a cool guy and really happy and always smiling and he was he was very excessively alive he was too alive um so to see him kind of to see his smile and see his picture it's 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 very difficult for me all the time every time i see my every time i see the book in the um in in the reception uh, or i've got a copy myself every time i see it it, it really makes me a little bit kind of, it's difficult for me to see it because he was so excessively alive. Um, and for him not to be there, it just doesn't make sense. But he's there and he's out there serving Sri Prabhupada's mission somewhere, I'm sure. And um, I'm really um, indebted to him for his association. And he was so spontaneous. I remember uh, I was struggling in the ashram to kind of Okay, so now we'll kindly ask uh, Krishna Kirtan Pu to come up and share a few words um, whilst he's coming up. So, as a tutor Puru was saying, you know, one one key quality of Jankinath Puru was that he was just so friendly to everyone, isn't it? He was so friendly, and you always wanted to have some time with him. Um, and I remember once we were um, late at night, and he was arguing against me, and I was thinking, like, are you even my friend? Like. <laughs> And he, he would always do this in, in his classes, in his courses. He would play like the devil, devil's advocate, he would say, isn't it? Um, and he would just test the waters and everything like that. And then he said to me once, he said, um, friendship isn't just me agreeing with you. It's me seeing what is Krishna trying to teach you and then giving you that lesson. Um, so it was really, really sweet. But now we'll hear more from Krishna Kirtan, a dear friend of Jankinath Puru's. Hare Krishna. Firstly, my respects to mother, father, and the family, to his spiritual master, his beloved eternal father, John Amolim Swami, and Vaj Bihari Prabhu, and to all of you. So uh, my memories, I was thinking just on the way here, how to package it. And uh, so the first part is Jigger, the sweet, cute, funny boy. Then it was Jankinath and his journey with Chandramoli Swami, his spiritual master. 
And then lastly was the sadhu, where he, um, his true colors came out. And then I realized what a saint this joker was. So uh, I'll start with Jigger. Uh, he came on the scene, I think, around 2006, five or six, something like that. And he came, and this guy just did not have an off button. He's just, he's just like, everything about him is just buzzing, he's twitching, he's just like always like on, you know? And I thought I was like a powerhouse. And this guy is just, like, I'm a powerhouse in a different way, but he was just like always willing to serve. One of the first memories I had was, um, I think it was the 2000. They connected on that level of just. So that was the jigger part. Then came the bit of where all of us were beginning to find spiritual masters around 2007. And Maharaj, when did he ask for shelter from you? 2009. So maybe the conversation started in 2007, I think. Oh, yeah. And we were in one Pandavasena retreat. Uh, we were on a bunk bed. And then we were just talking nonsense. And then at one point he just said, "You know, I'm 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 thinking of finding a spiritual master, but I don't know." And I said, "Okay, tell me." And he said, "It's like no one else has him as a spiritual master." 
And I was like, okay. And I think he confided in me because I had also gone to a different option. You know, at the time, most the, most many were going, taking shelter of Radhanath Swami, Bhakti Chodha Swami, Shivam Swami, who were often coming to London. And he said, I, I like Chandramoli Swami. And I was like, I don't know who that is. You know, like... <coughs> And, huh? That's one? That's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then he started telling me, and then we looked him up on the phone. And he said, uh, I just really like how he's just really kind. And I was like, okay, so that's really good. And I said, I'm also looking at Kadamakana Swami, and we get to do service, we'll be, you know, needed. Not, not that we're useful, but we'll be needed just because process of elimination there's no one else to do it <laughs> so um and in he went and Cholimoli Swami was coming and he would drive relentlessly from uh Mataji's house to pick up food and he would then drop off the food serve the food take stuff back and he was driving to the extent where it was becoming unsafe you know he was just he, he was just serving 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 and someone had to say you need to sleep and I'm sure the family were a little bit panicky at the time. Um, and, and then Chandamoli Maharaj, gracefully, he, he would stay at our house. And, and that's the second phase of my relationship with Janaki Nath Prabhu is he would come all the time to our house. And um, yeah. Chandamoli Maharaj is a beloved uncle of ours in our house. And because we were not direct disciples, we could it was a different type of relationship. We could laugh and, you know, uh, be more relaxed in a sense. Forgive me for any offences. <laughs> and uh, but Janki really liked it because he would come and then he would see Maharaj in a different light, and we would ho often have conversations on the staircase late at night. Um, and he would go back to the manor at like one, two in the morning. That's why he would sleep in Japa time, um, and then he would come back, serve breakfast, and do the whole thing. And I saw this relentless drive to be available for the spiritual master like I, no, I have not seen in any of my friends um, it, he had been absolutely captured by Chandramoli Swami uh, the blessing the love and care you'd given him he absolutely like without a shadow of doubt he received all of that and that was his true qualification in my opinion I remember one time you made him cry, you were like, on his case, and even at one point I was like, Maharaj, um, I, I, think, I think he's getting a bit upset, you know, <laughs> just, and, and, and then you were like, no, you know, JD's just spaced out, and, and then, and then uh, JD was like kind of crying, uh, not crying, but he was very like, you could see he was a bit jarred by it all, and then I went in the kitchen, and then Maharaj was speaking with somebody, and he used the word, um, I think it's affable? Affable, yeah. I didn't know what that was. So he explained it means just somebody who can get on with people. Is that right? As soon as you meet somebody, you can get a connection straight away. And JD had that magic, you know, he had the card tricks, but his true magic was the ability within a second just to, you felt like you were his friend. You felt the love straight away. And I think some of the great saints, like I've heard the stories of Sanatana Goswami, he also just very quickly could just give that impression that, oh, you, you, this person's been looking after me for ages. And that was his true magic, people. He understood the power of people and community, and he, he that's why you're all here, not to listen to us, but because you have that love for JD. And some of you may have only had one conversation. Some of you may have known him for 20 or, or 30 years. But he had that ability just to immediately connect. And you felt that love and that innocence from him. And then the cancer came. He came over, uh, Chandra Molimaj and Janki came over for lunch with Kadamakana Swami. And JD came in with his you know, JD style and everything. And Kadamakana Swami just broke the silence. He just said, Janki Nath, you're 50 now. You're dying. Stop. Get serious. And it was a tangible, like, breaking of the, of, of the ice. 
because obviously Maharaj had just gone through his first bout of cancer himself. And uh, he was telling Janaki Nath, you have to now go really deep. You know, it's not just about connecting with people. It's not just about preaching. You have to go back to Godhead this lifetime. Your spiritual master has given you all the gifts needed. Make it. Now go deep. And I saw that transition. He went to Eco Village. Um, he started reading the Bhagavatam really sincerely and, and consistently. And he went very deep. And then this, 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 he couldn't hide his devotion anymore. This sadhu came out. And um, I'll finish with my last exchange with him, which was, uh, ironically, the European Championship final day. And um, England were in the finals against Italy. And a group of six of us guys had gone to the annex to see him. And I think it was five or six days before he left his body. And um, he was in a lot of pain there. Uh, Sutapa Prabhu at the time, he was massaging him. And uh, it was quite difficult to see him in that stage because when I'd see him in, in the hospital a couple of times, he was still cracking jokes. He was still playing around with all the nurses and everything. So it was still seeing JD, but with cancer. But this time was like pain. And it was bringing back memories of seeing my spiritual master having lost a lot of weight and being in pain. And so it was very uncomfortable. Um, and, um, but he, he kept wanting to, he kept saying, keep chanting, keep chanting. Because we didn't know how to react. We were like, should we stop? Because he was groaning and bending over. But he said, kirtan, kirtan. So then we carried on the kirtan. And then uh, as kickoff time was coming, devotees wanted to start leaving. But I thought, no, no, you know, I can always watch the highlights, you know. So I just thought, let me stay. So I stayed. And then I was the last one in the room with Sutapa. And he grabbed my hand and he said, he said a few things. One of them I can share. He said, KK, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. You have to get absorbed if you want to make it. Otherwise, you can't make it. If I can make it, everyone can make it. So please get absorbed. And um, it took a lot of effort for him to say that. And I do think that that's his gift to me. Um, that he, he kind of tricked he, he tricked me a little bit and I just thought you know not Jigar you know he's just having a good time you know but silently all that hard work all that Guru Bhakti it all fructified in his desire for being in Vrindavan worshipping the Bhagavatam honouring the spiritual master and pleasing the Vaishnavas and um, yeah. hopefully with 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 a joyful smile as Jatanki had, um, we can also, as a community, get absorbed in the essence of pleasing the Vaishnavas, doing some devotional service, and going deep in the Bhagavatam and go back to Godhead, where we can we don't have to do these memorials; we can just be with him. So thank you for listening, uh, Janaki Nath Prabhu Ki Jai. Thank you, Krishna Gautam Prabhu. Um, so now we'll hear from one of Jankinath Prabhu's family members. Um, Kirit Vora is here. Oh, yeah. So as everyone knows, there's, there's many um, sides to Jankinath Prabhu, but one side that really brought out a lot um, of his personality was just very much like when you see him with his family, there was many times we were at his parents' house at like 1 a.m. getting, you know, paratas and uh, <laughs> snacks and everything like that. And you, it, it was so nice to see how much he was a saint, obviously, um, but he had so much love and um, affection for, for his family as well. So we'll hear some kind words from you. Would you? Yeah? Yeah. Just grab the podium from here. Yeah. Yeah. Would you? Yes. 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 Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Maharaj Ki Jai, His Holiness Guruji Sri Chandramoli Maharaj Ki Jai, Respected Swamiji's, Distinguished Friends and my family members, 
हरे कृष्णा जानकीनाथ प्रभु की जय जानकीनाथ दास द स्माइलिंग मोंग नाम लेता ज अपने समक्ष हस्तो निर्दोष जिज्ञासु विचारशील अने दैदीप्यमान चेहरो विजुलाइज था इसे अने अपनी मेमोरी ने थोड़ा वर्षों पाचल ले जिए तो एक नटखट मस्ती खोर अलर्ड बोल को चेहरो अपनी नजर समक्ष आए चे ये हतो अपनो जिगर हजुतो अपने विचारता था के क्या रे ते जिगर माथी जानकीनाथ मां ट्रांसफॉर्म थे हो क्या तो तेरे आ जगत माथी एक्सिट ले ली थी पन पन जता पहला आपने एक एग्जाम्पल आप तो गए हो कि हाउ एन ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन कैन बी ट्रांसफॉर्म्ड इनटू ऑन एन एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी पर्सनालिटी आपने जानकीनाथ दास ने घनी बातों डिस्कस करी छे सांभरी छे तथा शेयर करी छे इटले आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू रिपीट दैट अगेन एंड फ्रैंकली स्पीकिंग you all know much more than what i know about him but i can say that his journey was full of thrill and adventures and he was a great fighter and courageous and yet perhaps the most soft hearted person i have seen in my life is swami ji his swami ji sutapa sutapadas is mentioned in his bio biopic that he was the default person you would approach when an emergency arose and requiring someone to go above and beyond the call of duty so we are grateful to swami ji Sri Sutapadas for writing such a wonderful biopic of Janaki Nath, and nothing remained to be. So nothing much remained to be said and known once you have read this book, and I will suggest and request that this book. to be translated into gujarati so that uh, more of our family members and others can read it nothing happens randomly in this universe there is a reason there is a logic and there is a system for everything to be happened even the birth and death death are the part of this system and controlled जानकीनाथ नो जन्म पर एक खास प्रयोजन हेतु थी थायो तो तेनु आ जगत नो कार्य पूर्ण थई गयो इतले भगवाने तेने आ अनंत ब्रह्मांड मा वधारे मोटी जवाबदारी संभारो संभारवा मोटे बुलावी ली तो तो जानकीनाथ नो आ महाभिनिष्क्रमण हतु व्हाट इस महाभिनिष्क्रमण the great departure siddhartha left his home and family at the age of 29 years to live an ascetic life janakinath left this world at the age of 36 to serve even a larger family in this universe and take up even bigger responsibilities i can say he was fortunate to have parents like harish bhai and bharti ben and a loving sister like ushma he was also fortunate to be blessed by guru shri chandra mauli ji maharaj ji who molded his life and in a perfect shape he was also fortunate to have friends and colleagues like uh, uh, swami sri sutapadas and others and 
above all we are all fortunate to have a person like jigar and sant saint like jankinath das in our lives jant so jankinath prabhu ki jai hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna thank you so much um before we call up our next speaker um jankinath prabhu spent quite a bit of time quite a lot of time in india in mumbai in radhagopinath mandir in chaupati so every year there will be a group of boys from here to do their brahmachari training they'll get sent to india to this particular temple out of the 30 years this has been happening there has probably been no famous person no more famous person than jankinath prabhu to uh, have memories have relationships um at radhagopinath mandir any time we would go we would often ask some of the monks Do you know Jankina? Do you know Jigar? Like, yeah, yeah, you know him. And he would uh, immediately uh, just uh, exude so much happiness and so much memories and even 5 minutes association with Jankina Prabhu you would feel a lot of happiness and you remember him for a lifetime. I would often think uh, someone asked me yesterday they said to me, uh, "What were your greatest memories with Jankina Prabhu?" And I was thinking, oh. And I realized my greatest memories were any time I was actually with him. because you had him for 5 minutes you look away and he's gone right was it like that at home as well yeah. <laughs> marat mr go yeah he was here and then next thing you know he's on a different planet uh, so it was always very difficult to get his time but the time that we did have with him it was very 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 special so um next up we'd like to invite uh, braj bihari prabhu uh, to share some thoughts हरे कृष्णा माय सिंसियर रिस्पेक्टफुल ऑफ सेंसेस टू जानकीनाथ प्रभुस फैमिली पेरेंट्स एंड टू हिज बिलीवड स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर इज ओलिनेश श्री चंद्रमौली स्वामी महाराज and all the assembled devotees uh jankinath prabhu has left such a deep impression you know in mumbai in the ashram where i stay the first time he came everybody said i remember we all were saying who is this boy jigar is come as a breath of fresh air you know he just it's like we were all like who is he you know and um, that energy that enthusiasm he carried was surreal and i remember it was i would tell him many times i would joke with him i'm just sharing it here because it's a close family gathering i said you know something very embarrassing but i'm just i used to joke with him very uh, i used to tell him good you know you are a, a brahmachari and i am a brahmachari if i was a woman i would have hunted you <laughs> <laughs> so then you would laugh see what what we all remember in chopati is his innocence his purity amazing that genuine desire to serve and i was shocked in 2008 i think one year before he got initiated from maharaj he came to me said i have to i want to ask you a few questions i said okay i thought you would just ask some you know just like devotees ask but your whole question is and he sat with me for 3 hours and he was like asking very deep questions in a funny way like what is the what do you think after being in the ashram for so many years how do you think you have um, handled your anarthas or how, what what does it back to god it actually mean to you you know the very deep questions and he was asking them in such a light way i was like i i can't forget that so those are some of the and and i remember once in mayapur he was serving maharaj we had gone to mayapur and he was running around serving and doing so many things 
because i have served guests and i have served my guru maharaj also and and i know what it is to be a personal servant you know so i am if when i am serving my guru maharaj and senior disciples senior devotees i am very uh, anxious i don't want to get things wrong and i'm like okay is it going right and i don't have time for others but he seemed to be perfectly at ease he was talking to me i had to tell him go you have to you have seva you know you have seva of your guru maharaj but he seemed to be so comfortable doing service to his guru maharaj talking to us and what i particularly remember is the last conversation we had and it's a very intense situation for me because i was in with my mother my mother was very sick and it's ironical we always had lot of funny exchanges but my last conversation was a conversation where we shared lot of silence because this was i think just a few weeks before he kind of in the last phase of cancer so i remember he called me i was in udupi which is a south indian town and i had i'm i'm part of the rabha gopina chopati brahmachari ashram but for 8 month no for almost 10 months i was staying with my mother like i was i'm officially a brahmachari but I, in the temple but i was staying with my mother in the village and i was like i was i had to wear track pant shirt i had to run to the hospital get medicines my mother was very sick and i had to manage a big house i was going through a lot of anxiety struggle managing the whole house managing my mother and and there was covid there was lockdown things were intense for me and then i get this phone call from janki nath prabhu asking about my well being and it was ironical you know I, and i knew and he also both of us knew what is the situation and i'm i thought i need to give him i need to give him some you know uh positive uh, some encouragement but he was asking about my mother about my well being and if i am able to cope up with this challenge and then we spoke about ramayan he had been hearing some ramayan lectures so then he was asking me about ramayan and then we discussed about jatayu vibhishan different characters from ramayan and and it, we shared so much silence in that conversation you know it was it was very different from the, all the conversations I had maybe in that silence you know there was kind of a sinking feeling i was having that i'm going to lose him or so then that was the last time we spoke so you know when i remember jankinath prabhu since he left us i've been there are there are three statements from our scriptures which always i remember you know whenever i think of jankinath it just comes to me one is shila propad would quote many times dheera dheera jana priya priya karo nirmat saro pujito he would quote the qualities of the six goswamis of vrindavan is that they were very dear to gentle and the ruffians so whenever i hear that you know i know it's jankinath the second i remember shila propad's purport to the second canto i think first or second chapter where there is a verse which says tarvo kimna jivanti what's the point of living a long life so there shila propad quotes three examples of shankaracharya chaitanya mahaprabhu and uh, jesus christ that you know they didn't live a long life but they added so much value and they contributed so much to human society so whenever i read that purport or whenever i remember jankinath i remember this purport of shila propad saying that it's not important how long you live but how you live and so jankinath has taught us how to live and the third thing i remember is a statement from adi lila ninth chapter shila propa that is a section where his holiness kadam kanan swami maharaj would also quote this purport many times you know he uh, there is a section where kaviraj goswami says that in the future chaitanya charitamrit will be written uh, and propad writes that that iskon activities will be mentioned in chaitanya charitamrita so and then propad writes about how sunday feast program that we have is actually chaitanya charitamrita gor lila in action and then when i see that i remember once telling jankinath prabhu clearly prabhu you have just popped out of the chaitanya charitamrita <laughs> you've come out of the chaitanya charitamrita come you know he's come out of the scriptures because if you see the characters mentioned in the scriptures it's exactly like I mean, Jankinath embodied it: non-enviousness, loving everyone, 
selflessness i mean it's not a distant past you know 5000 years ago 500 years ago we are reading it in the scriptures it's happening here so he is actually come is is actually given us a glimpse of what the spiritual world is like and his attachment to his guru maharaj and his service it's it's amazing i just pray to krishna that you know i can because when i remember him i get a lot of strength and i get a lot of faith in the process that shila prabhupada has given us and and i really hope that i can always remember him follow his footsteps so much uh, more he has taught us by his example i remember once we went to shuchadharma prabhu's house and shuchadharma prabhu had also been diagnosed and we had a you know it it had this it had not become so serious it just in the initial days i and gaur gopal prabhu had come this 2018 i think 2018 and he was joking all the time we were talking you know we had ice cream <laughs> and i am like uh you know i was struggling with this to grappling with the reality he was giving so much life to everyone and he was joking with me about one thing there was one secret i shared when i come to bhakti janata manor you know there is a ashram where i where i stayed which is which is not the conventional ashram there is what is that place i, I don't know uh, annex annex ah. so there i was staying and then i had this key to the uh, the village behind and i would go for a walk and i had this idiosyncrasy and uh, habit which you know i would go and embrace some trees <laughs> and i would stand in front of the trees i would you know i had some 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 practices i i would do and i would write poetry and all of that and i didn't know anybody was watching me but jankinath was watching from the window of the <laughs> that was an ashram there i didn't know he was watching it he didn't say anything to me for 3 days he saw me doing that <laughs> and on the fourth day he comes and says prabhu he told me everything he saw he, he had observed everything i do and then he would joke about it all the time <laughs> all the time even when we shared that silence in udupi when he called me and i was really struggling with my mother and i remember just a few days before that i was thinking i'll go crazy because i wasn't able to manage the house and then he calls me up and as we were sharing silence you know he knew that i'm getting emotional so he started joking about my you know he said so prabhu uh, with all of that are you still embracing trees there in udupi <laughs> <laughs> so then i would tell him don't tell anyone and then he would say yeah, yeah i won't tell anyone and if i tell someone about it i'll tell them not to tell anyone <laughs> so it was very sweet exchanges and yeah jankinath prabhu <clears throat> thank you very much for teaching us how to live how to please guru how to be a human how to be a devotee you know i remember uh, the character from those of you are from india you must have seen this movie anand you know i remember that character of anand isn't it it was like that that so those of you know bollywood it's a, it's a classic movie that person is dying of cancer but he just makes everybody's life blissful and i thought it's just a movie you know it's mundane but you know there is a saying truth is stranger than fiction and the reality is much more beautiful actually so i i am sure he is with prabhupada and he is with is is the parampara serving and it's so glorious and his guru maharaj is there to help him go back to god it <laughs> and so i think it's an amazing amazing departure amazing life he has led i think we all should be proud of him and we all should be having a desire to please him thank you thank you everyone thank especially i want to thank his family you know trust me good fruits come from good trees <laughs> so you are responsible and of course the spiritual master has blessed him so profusely so i am grateful to you maharaj grateful to all of you thank you very much jankinath prabhu ki jai shila prabhu pad ki jai isolene chandramouli swami maharaj ki jai tai gaur premanand Thank you, Rajiv Bihari Prabhu, for your um, words, and Jankinath Prabhu. Actually, that time where he, Jankinath Prabhu, originally went to India to do sabbatical after university, that whole two years is a 
big blur to many of us. He's tried to explain it to us many times. And we're like, we don't know if you're in the UK, if you're in India, if you're an illegal immigrant somewhere <laughs> or anything like that. But um, it was evident to see that he conquered a lot of hearts then spoke so highly of the devotees there. So now, we'll, as many devotees were saying, um, Jankinath Prabhu had a very loving relationship with His Holiness Chandra Muni Maharaj, his spiritual master. So we'd like to ask Maharaj um, if you'd like to say a few words. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I've been using this all weekend. Might as well continue. <laughs> I'd like to begin by really profusely thanking Ekta for the inspiration behind this whole arrangement for Janaki Nath's memorial. Of course, I had it in my mind, thinking soon it will be that anniversary time when he departed. But it was Ekta that really pushed it forward and inspired the idea to really do, do something in a very big way to honor the, uh, this such special person, Janaki Nas. So thank you very much for all of your endeavors to bring all everyone together for this memorial. Om Agyan Timirandasya Girajana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gudavena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa, Thiru Vishya, Kripa, Sindhu Pae, Vichya, Patitanam, Bhavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo, Namaho, Namaha, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Sivasari, Gaur, Bhakta, Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare, hmm. Janiganath Prabhu Ki Jai. I'd just like to read one verse from the Bhagavad Gita, which sort of, in my mind, illustrates the character of this great personality that we're honoring today. It's from the uh, fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, verse number seven. Yoga yukta visudatma, vijitatma vitendriya, sarva bhutatma bhutatma, korvan apina vipyate. One who works in devotion, who is a pure soul, and who controls his mind and senses is dear to everyone, and everyone is dear to him. Though always working, such a man is never entangled. So this verse kind of illustrates from my understanding and experience with Johnny Gadnath, his character, one who was dear to everyone, and everyone was dear to him. Because Srila Prabhupada mentions in a few times in his lectures, he said the difference between being in the spiritual world and being in the material world is those in the spiritual world are non-envious and those in the material world are envious. He made a clear distinction when he made this point to, the, to help us understand that this quality is such an exalted quality, and it's a very rare quality. Although may we may not be able to see it like that, but one who is non-envious means that one always works for the welfare of others and always thinks of how to do good to others. And that's my experience with Johnny Kinath. I'll backtrack a little bit in my own relationship with him. Uh, when we first met, uh, his mood was to do whatever he could 
to assist me in my service of preaching, especially in the UK. And of course, that extended af outwards as we traveled to different places in India and in also in the US. But his mood was, he just wanted to do service. He just wanted to somehow assist me. He wanted to cook. He said to me one time, he said, I'll make you some tiplas. And I said, what is that? <laughs> I didn't even know what it was. He said, oh, it's very nice. I said, mm -hmm. okay. And he did, and I started to ask him regularly to make tebulus. <laughs> and he, he would like to do it. That was pretty much my experience with him when we were traveling. And when I was in India, and he was also in the, uh, in the ashram in Chaupati. And... Um, he spent a year and a half there, and Braja Bihari mentioned so many wonderful qualities that were noticed by the devotees there. But when I was there, I got a kind of a, a, an eye-waking quality that, was, that came to me. The leading devotees there, who were really in charge of the brahmacharis, they were considered to be the leading brahmacharis, Gorinda, Gogwinda and uh, Garanga, both of them came up to me and said, you know, Many times, and we have this policy of accepting people from the Western countries to give them a chance to stay in the ashram, and we allow them to work and also to train. And we find that every time we do that, we usually have trouble with all of them. But there was one person we never had trouble with. <laughs> and when not only did we not have trouble with, he was a great asset in being here, and that was John Gina. <laughs> And to me, that was like a, a quite amazing because they said it with such feeling and such depth, depth of conviction that I got understood that, yeah, this person is a person who always wants to make a difference in the positive way wherever he is. And that was my experience with him. Um, and, of course, when we first began, he was always trying to do personal service, whatever he could do, assisting, driving, and cooking and getting things. But then I noticed that, you know, this boy has many other amazing qualities. And simply doing personal services is nice, but he's meant for bigger things. And my, I, I was always thinking how I could push him out of that mood because he loved to do the personal service. And if I would try to push him out, he would always bounce back and want to do more personal service. <laughs> So, of course, for me it was good because I needed it also. But at the same time, I said, this boy is meant for something big in life and not just doing personal service. So well, one time we were traveling in, uh, in uh, America. And we, were in, uh, we, we had arrived in Boston and we had flown in that same day. And it was a Rathiatra just about an hour after we had arrived. And so I had given class in the place that I was before, and we had got jumped on the airplane, and I arrived in Boston, and then the Rathiatra started. They asked me to lead the kirtan, and we had a two-hour Rathiatra ceremony, and then I was supposed to give the Sunday feast <laughs> all in one day. So when it came to the Sunday feast time, I was, and I said, uh, Sunday feast lecture, I said, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm too worn out. I said, you do it. And he hadn't been doing any preaching with me at all at that time, and he was just always doing personal service. And he was, he said, no, no, I think, I think they want to hear from you. I said, no, no, you're going to do it. And he came back and forth, and I said, you do it. <laughs> and uh, then he understood that I wasn't going to change. <laughs> and so... Um, and then he came, it was a large assembly of devotees, and when the, it was in the Boston Temple, was the Sunday program, it was also the Rathiatra Festival afterwards. And uh, so I was thinking, I'm going to listen to his lecture, but I'm not going to let him know that I'm listening to it. <laughs> so I hid behind the door, <laughs> and just to listen. And this was the, my first experience in, with him, with listening to him give a class. And the whole class was roaring in laughter. <laughs> it was like one thing after, and I'm thinking, wow, he's really good. <laughs> he, 
He's really a, he able to bring people in in such a way, and not only making them laugh, but bringing out the philosophical points in such a way that it made people think. He gave all his classes mostly interactive. He never just sat there and spoke and then asked for questions in the end. He would pose questions to the audience and bring them into the into the conversation in such a way that they would get inspired and then he would start the whole discussion with the entire assembly of people. And this is how he gave classes. And, and afterwards, he co people would come up and say, wow, that was nice. I got a lot out of that. Who is that person? I said, well, you know, his name's Johnny Ginnott. <laughs> So he was, he was, he had that, and then the temple president came up to me at the end of the class. He said, boy, that's one of the best Sunday classes we've ever had. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this was my, and this was right at the beginning of our relationship. And, and then I, I, I understood, you know, he is meant for more than just doing personal service. But he was always bouncing back in that area. He always wanted to do that. And we got along. But sometimes, you know, you know Johnny Ginath, he had this mood of uh, kind of like forgetting things. <laughs> like, you know, I would give him my keys and then I asked, where's the keys? And he couldn't find it, you know. <laughs> he was so sweet, I couldn't say anything else. But he would always be, you know, uh, absorbed in doing service. One time we were in, uh, we were in Detroit. And we had uh, I, we had been there for a few days, so that the next morning we were scheduled to leave, and we had a flight to Hartford, Connecticut, from Detroit, and I had to do the Sunday feast program. It was also on the the afternoon of that same day, so I was so tired <laughs> from the from the programs in Detroit. So I said to him, I said, uh, "What time is our?" Uh, what time uh, is our our flight? When do we uh, when do we leave? And he came back to me. He said, "Well, um, it's uh, eleven minutes after nine in the morning." I thought that's an unusual time for a flight to leave, and so I I got a little bewildered. But I liked the idea because it was later than I thought. Because <laughs> I was tired, and I was like, oh, "I'll get a little extra break so I can chant and rest a little bit." And so I asked him again about a half hour later. I said, check again and see what is that flight time. And he came back and he said, yeah, it's 11 minutes after 9. Okay, so we all get to the airport and then we get there. Eleven, nine, I mean, 9 minutes after 11. And we got there and the lady said, actually, 9-11 was your arrival time in Hartford. <laughs> So he gave me the arrival time instead of the departure time. <laughs> so we missed the flight <laughs> completely. The flight had already been gone. So we were there. And she, Prabhu, was with us, the three of us. And then uh, we had to figure out how to get there. And so the lady said, well, there is another flight. But it's a, it's a less direct flight. It's, it has one stop, and there's only one opening on the whole flight for one seat. So they all said, "Well, Maharaj, you go," you know. And I said, "All right, I'll go." But you know, let's see. You guys can maybe come standby. And so they registered for standby. So we went, and, and then I got on the flight, and then just before the flight took took off, both of them got on the flight. So we were all three on there. So we went to our, you know, stopover. And when we were in the airport waiting for a connecting flight, he was preaching to people, and people were coming up to us, and we were distributing books, and we were distributing uh, mantra cards to people. And we met so many different people in that time that we were just waiting for our next departure. And then we got onto the flight, and then when we got there, um, of course, we were late for the program, but so we went right into the program, and we usually had to, we had time for for taking lunch, and then we went right into the program. But his mistake apparently in the, worked in such a way we got a chance to preach to so many people and distribute books, and it was amazing. So I was thinking, hmm, he doesn't make mistakes; <laughs> it just looks like it. <laughs> 
So I was grateful for that because uh, that was our whole idea, is to reach as many people as we could with our the message of Krishna consciousness. And so he, Krishna would use him in that way to somehow inspire people. And one of the things that, we, of course, that was mentioned by Krishna Kirtan Prabhu, he was so, the word was affable. Affable means that immediately, when people would see him, they would feel like there was no, there was nothing in between the two of them. He could talk to anyone at any time, whoever they were, and they would feel comfortable. One time, of course this happened many times, we went, we would go up to register or check in for our flight and he would be talking to the person who was doing the check-in and he would say, are you in anxiety? <laughs> and the man would say, yeah, yeah, I'm in anxiety. <laughs> He said, well, we got something that can help you. And then he would come up with this app about chanting Hare Krishna. And then he would give them the, the, the information on how do they connect to the app. And he would do that with, every, with many people. He would just t come up to them and say, are you happy? <laughs> are you feeling frustrated in your work? You know, something to kind of like get their attention. And, me, and they would never, and I never saw anyone feel uncomfortable with his stand. But if I would have tried to do that, they would have looked at me like, you know, Harani Kashi Poo. You know, <laughs> I would have got it. I, I couldn't do that. I would just let, you know, he was, he was the person that could do that. Because, he, again, yeah. there was that quality that was so, it's so rare and so precious. And it's, it's the foundation for actually the quality of a great devotee, completely freed from, fall, from ego, completely non-envious. And he exhibited that always. He always wanted to serve. He always wanted to do good to others. A lot of the stories that I'm hearing from other persons about his life and preaching was things that I had never heard of. Because after some time, he was out there doing more preaching, working with the devotees here, and of course, wherever he was, he was doing, arranging different preaching pro. But he would never come back and brag about it or tell me about it. If I asked him, he would tell me a little, but he never wanted to present himself in the role of a disciple telling his spiritual master how wonderful he's doing in his preaching. He was always so humble, so shy, and so free from this idea of wanting to get praised from whatever he did. And I really appreciate it. And one of the most amazing things, and I think this is unique in the history of our society that I can see, is that, of course, when he got that, that cancer, that disease, I mean, I was, he was, we were going back and forth. He was on Sankirtan. One year was in the year 2016. It was in the, uh, in the Christmas marathon. And he was, he was, he had actually practically came in first in that year in the entire UK for distributing books. And uh, he was distributing over 100 Bhagavad Gita's every day. But he was working in such a way that he would never, not never, but he would neglect his own personal needs. He always just wanted to serve and sometimes he would skip eating or he would just make a sandwich so he could eat really quickly and get back into his service. And he, he really absorbed himself in distributing books in such a way that, that um, he loved it. And then year after year, even when he, was, he had come down with that, that, that disease, still he was out there doing Sankirtan. And then, of course, at one point it was time for him to do some work on his health. So he came to the hospital here somewhere in, uh, I don't remember which hospital it was, but here in uh, the UK. And then I went to visit him one time, and he was always laughing, smiling up. And the nurses really liked him. They was, he was the patient that was the best of all patients, because <laughs> he was never complaining, never really asking for anything. He took whatever they gave him. And many times, uh, while he was in the hospital, he would just disappear out of his hospital bed and the nurses couldn't find him. 
And he'd be walking around to the different wards and he would be distributing books. <laughs> and then one time he, he said, come on, Maharaj, I'll me I want you to meet some of the people that I met. And he was taking me to all of the different persons that he got books. And they would say, oh, he's so nice. He's made me feel so happy. He's a nice person. And they would always be praising him so many ways. And he'd just make friends with people and then they would give him a Bhagavad Gita. And then... After some time, he was thinking, how can I help these people in a big way? And so after coming in and out of the hospital a few different times for different cares and operations, he started to actually uh, think how to do something in a bigger way. And so he organized... After developing a relationship with the doctors, with the nurses, with the, the, the people who were working in the hospital, and with many of the cancer patients, he organized a retreat here at Bhaktivedanta Manor. And 35 cancer patients came to that retreat. It's on film. You can see it. And, and they had a whole wonderful, like, never, some of them never had any connection with Krishna consciousness at all, but they liked him. <laughs> there was something about him that they really liked and therefore they came. And they came and then and you could see in that they had a nice experience. He was teaching Japa and he, he arranged devotees to meet with them and talk to them and show them Bhaktivedanta Mandar, take them into kirtans, give them prasadam. And not, I don't know how many, but many of them, some of them, actually left their bodies not long after that. And so he actually gave, gave these people who never really, in, in, in a real sense of the term, had an opportunity to associate with devotees and engage in Krishna. He gave them a, a wonderful Krishna consciousness experience. And of course, we understand by scripture that that experience coming to the Holy Dham, taking prasadam, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, that means in their next life they are, they will be elevated into a very good situation where they'll be, they'll be able to continue on in their spiritual journey. So, uh, and one of the I guess there's so many things about him that are so amazing. Um, of course, when I think about him now, as I think Krishna Kirtan said something that really struck me, is that when, when he left, there wasn't a sadness when he left. There's more of a sadness now, I think, because we really, we really understood what, what a wonderful person he was and how much he gave in his life to others. And just being around him, was uh, I think I think Brudge Bihari mentioned. I remember one time I was. Yeah, this is a little thing, but it just illustrates his his, his character. And we were a little. We were in this was a Rathayatra in Washington D.C. in in America, and it was a small circle of devotees were talking. He was standing next to me, and I was talking. I was looking this way, and then at one point I went to look, and he was gone. And I couldn't find him anywhere. I was looking all around. So I just kept talking. And then after a few minutes, I looked, and he's back. Uh, what? Uh, where did he come from? I didn't see him go. I didn't see him come. I was thinking he's, he's, he just appeared and disappeared. And he had that <laughs> quality that he could somehow just appear and disappear. And all of a sudden, you know, it was a, a different situation. <laughs> It, it sounds like a small thing, but he, he did that so naturally. It's like, you know, that's me. <laughs> and uh, when he actually got to depart, when we went his departure ceremony here at Bhaktivedanta Manor, I could see and I also experienced, I felt within my heart, although there was a sense of of longing for his association, we were going to miss him. There was a joy in the atmosphere. It was really strong. There was that actually he had achieved the purpose of life. 
He had perfected his life. And I was feeling actually kind of happy that his life was perfect. And his disappearance just enunciated that mood. And uh, this is something that I noticed. Bhagwat Ananda was there when we were performing the ceremony right outside of Bhaktivedanta Manor in a little tent that we had erected and, and his body was being laid there. And uh, people from India and many of the important temples had sent their various types of uh, remnants from deities, from Radharani, from Krishna. And, and I was thinking, where did these all come from? <laughs> How did they know? And they were sending all of these things to, to for, before Janakinath for after his departure. So it was my service. I was putting it on him. It was garlands. It was Radharani's uh, uh, cloth. It was Krishna's, you know, mukut and various other, you know, sacred items. And at one point, I looked and I saw something. I was looking at him and it appeared to me and I got so excited. I said, Look, he's smiling. He's smiling. I saw something from the corner of his mouth. It seemed like it moved upward. Although he was, you know, his soul was somewhere else, still, but he, still he was exhibiting his presence through his 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 body. And I just got so excited. I said, Bob, what an under Look, 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 he's there. <laughs> I got that. And, and I don't know if he got it, but I did anyway. <laughs> it was an experience that he was actually feeling, I was actually feeling his presence really strongly at that particular time. But it was a feeling of joy. It was a feeling of success. It was like the victory of life. He had achieved perfection. And um, I think many of us felt that also. We went to the crematorium. And you know, you go to a crematorium, people are like, you know, it's like really sad and morose and everything is dragging. We had a raging kirtan inside of the crematorium. <laughs> and it was like, there were people waiting for their, their turn to do their thing with their, you know, deceased. And they were thinking, are we in the right place? You know? <laughs> It was a raging kirtan. And we did kirtan during that time. Sutapa Maharaj, you know, Keshava Maharaj, he started to sing kirtan, and he became so enlivened. I mean, I've seen him do kirtan before, but he was like joyfully singing the glories of the holy name, and everybody was feeling that this is not a, this is not a departure ceremony. This is a celebration. <laughs> And celebrating the soul's return back to the spiritual world. But one thing that was very significant, the departure date that he left on was it was July 17th, 2021. And we learned that there is a certain time period right after the Jagannath Rati Yatra that any soul who is engaged in devotional service, if they leave within that certain period, I think it's a 10-day period, they're guaranteed to go back to the spiritual world. And he left within that period. So Krishna arranged it so nicely to make sure that his devotee got everything uh, he needed in it so he could take him back to the spiritual world. And sometimes we say that because we sometimes wishful thinking that we think that Oh yes, this person went to the spiritual world. Well, a lot of times we just say that off the cuff. But I, this time I actually felt that this is what this was actually the case. There was no doubt. The way he departed, and if you can speak to C.C. was it Radha? Uh, what's his name? Radha Damodar Prabhu, who was with him in his last few moments before he departed. When Janikinath was going through, he was going through some pain. And just about a couple minutes before he departed, everything changed. Everything changed. He sat up in a lotus position 
and he stayed in the lotus position, and then all of a sudden a beautiful smile appeared on his face, and he left. That's how he left. <laughs> Although he under, just before then, a few moments before then, he was undergoing tremendous pain. All of a sudden, Krishna took it all away, <laughs> and he just he just departed like a perfect yogi. And Radha Damodar, he writes about that. And then he told his spiritual master, Shiva Ram Maharaj, the experience he had with Janaki Nath. And Shiva Ram Maharaj wrote something really interesting and very enlightening. He said, I can understand from, the, from, from hearing about this specific soul that you were mentioning, that he came back for a mission. He did what he could, and it was time for him to leave. <laughs> That was coming from Shiva Ram Maharaj. He wrote that. He not only spoke it, he actually wrote that. So uh, we were fortunate to be blessed by such a saintly person. Of course, I used to see him as a disciple, but after sometimes when he, after and our relationship started to grow, mm -hmm. I was thinking, who is the disciple and who is the spiritual master? <laughs> he taught me so much in my own practice of Krishna consciousness. And he taught me the how, how to treat devotees in such a way that you always work looking f to benefit those devotees by whatever you do. And uh, he had many, many amazing qualities. Many, many amazing qualities. One thing he didn't like, he said, I can't eat Corella. Don't ever give me Corella. So when I was with him, I, I would, and we would go sometimes to someone's house. I said, is there any Corella here? And I said, Johnny Kinnath, this is just for you. And so he would look at it, and then, and I would say, yeah, come on, it's nice, you know. It stimulates appetite, you know. It's just a mindset. And he would, he wouldn't eat it. <laughs> so after I persisted a few times. And after a while, he started to eat it. He did it just to please me. <laughs> uh, we, we had a very sweet... Real, I never considered him to be a disciple. I considered him to be a very, very dear friend. Uh, a friend that I... Uh, and I can honestly say this, and this is my experience. When, I was, when he was with me, I always felt happy. I always felt like I don't like want to be anywhere else but with Johnny Kinath. He didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to say anything. Just by his presence, and it would you would feel like it's just so wonderful just to be with him. So uh, thank you all for coming to this memorial. Keep Johnny Kinath in your heart and remember what he he taught us because he taught us so much. And the main thing he taught us is so how to serve in a way that is completely selfless, always trying to benefit others in whatever way they he interacted with others. Hare Krishna. Janaki Nath Prabhu Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, Raj Biharipu, did you want to say... Something to me. Just uh, one small thing. I, I had completely forgot. I don't know. I was... Jankinath Prabhu, when he was uh, in Chopati, many times there's one common uh, joke, or not joke, Krishna. Okay. One of the com most common things we would tell him is, Prabhu, we want to kidnap you from manor and we want to keep you here. And then we would joke about it. And I didn't realize the seriousness of what we were telling him because... We, we would tell him that Radha Gopinath wants you here. And then we would laugh it off. But then what happened when he left this world? All of us remembered that joke we used to do with him. Because he left on the day, 17 July is the day when our deities were installed. It's the birthday of Radha Gopinath. So, and you know, that was the time when we were doing the Abhishek inside of the, you know, it's like the Brahmotsav day, the day we celebrate the anniversary. And uh, we said, okay, Radha Gopinath Ji has taken him. He didn't want, Radha Gopinath didn't want him to come to our ashram, but Radha Gopinath Ji have taken him to their own abode. So, 
that day is very special also hari krishna thank you that's uh, some very wonderful past times as marj is explaining um janakinath's disappearance was like a celebration um and myself and a few of the other boys we were thinking that uh whilst we in the ashram were sacrificing so much time to serve getting up very early and then when janakinath probably left and we knew that his departure was a success it felt like yes one of my friends did it right or my son did it my nephew did it and it felt like wow i actually saw that uh and it was very inspiring so thank you marsh for explaining or such a celebration and uh to move on and last but not least we have one more uh we have uh lalit mehta who i believe is a a family friend to say a few words and then we will make a few announcements and we actually have one message from janakinath prabhu himself so uh we have that to look forward to Hare Krishna everybody Hare Krishna Jankinath I mean Jigar I went with my family to back home India in Tirupati and in Tirupati isko and I did the 430 Mangala Aarti I came back here then my son Viral same age of Jankinath Viral was dreaming to do the Mangala Aarti here so he came Mangala Aarti here in a manner and he see the jigger he said jigger what you doing here and jigger say viral what you doing here so viral say i came from mangla arti and as maraj says you know janakin at the way he is straight away connect so he connect my son and uh, he keep in touch then in after mangla arti you know uh, tulsi marani arti and guru puja and class and then prasad of course prasad so viral and jigger keep in touch so viral after a couple of years viral passed the driving test and uh, he got a car so he was he was telling me he said daddy i am going manner i said but this time he said yes jigar call me so jigar was keep calling him here and he is keep coming here and one day my son told me daddy i am going to move manner i said for what he is to uh, learn the gita and my son blaming me he said daddy you never tell me that about gita i said look son i never read so how can i tell you because he is you know everybody said as yes, it is there is gita in my home but not read properly you know so he said daddy i want to learn the gita and i like to go to manner so i said okay so I, he moved here so from that day we make the rules that every sunday whatever weather coming we going to go manner to see my son and we come here for gor aarti because everybody knows gor aarti we love to dancing <laughs> and after gor aarti we do the prasad together in the small prasad room so jigar and uh, always sit down with us and we always have a chatting and uh, jigar you know actually is attract so my son inspired and then jigar became jankinath but the uh, the relation with jigar is jigar's jigar you know in a funny way he telling people in a temple he said look viral's grand uh, grandfather and my grandfather had a partnership 20 years in a business it was 60 years ago so we are very good f- family connection you know and uh, that days you know the suta bar prabhu here i mean uh, as because of swami maharaj and uh, they all associate and uh, after three months he, he did the bhakti uh, bhakti shastri course he came home he came home and he changed he didn't come home we take three months more so he six months live here he got a lot of opportunity to go with jigar for lot of sanghas in the lot of universities big big university the where jigar preaching very well and my son learn a lot my son came home he changed and he changed the whole family no doubt you know 36 years i am this country so from day one i am coming to the manor but i wasn't that much involved in a krishna consciousness but once you know thanks to jigar thanks to jankinath you know we all change and then my daughter uh, jigar Jankina encouraged my daughter to serve in a gaushala so my daughter serving in a gaushala then my wife start to serve in a japa garden and my youngest son sunny he is doing the tilak and i got a service in a security 
सो वी ऑल फैमिली इन ऑल थैंक्स टू जानकीनाथ जानकीनाथ प्रभु की जय Okay, so uh, thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> um, now we will have a short video, um, one that I think Jankinath Prabhu made as he was coming out of hospital from one of his operations. But um, it really talks loudly about his personality. So we'll go to that. So I ended with a lighter note, so I thought I'd share this. Um, when I was in the hospital, because one of my symptoms, my colon gets blocked up, I need to constipate. So with one of the person in the hospital, and he just shared me this uh, joke. So I ended with a joke. He said that, um, have you seen this new movie come out? It's called Constipation. And I'm like, no. He goes, oh, oh, that's right, because it's not come out yet. <laughs> I found it hilarious. I hope I don't get in trouble that, for that joke. Um, but anyways, folks, thank you very much. I, I um, yeah, I just, I just pray, pray to the um, Krishna that somehow the other I get an opportunity to render service for all the wonderful prayers and affection you've all shown, shown me as well. So um, thank you. Till next time, go around your life. Give up, bye. I just thought I'd end with a light to ignore. So I thought I'd share this. Um, when I was in the hospital. Okay, so that's brought us to the end of um, the speeches. We'll now have a short kirtan and then prasadam. Um, but just whilst they're setting up, you can start setting up. Um, then we'll just say a few of the uh, announcements out there. So we'd like to, if everyone could raise their hands as high as you can, touch the ceilings if you can. And we would like to say three extremely loud Hari Bulls um, to Jankinath Prabhu's parents because they've sponsored a massive feast that is yet to come. So please do stay around for that. Hari Haribo! Hari So yeah, we'll have that um, soon. And then we'd also like to give um, a very big thank you to the School of Bhakti who's put together all of this program and the manner for facilitating as well. Um, and also um, all of the speakers, His Holiness Chandra Mulya Maharaj for gracing us and speaking um, to all of us and Vajbihari Prabhu, many of the other devotees for coming and also saying so many wonderful and enlivening things um, about Jan Jankinath Prabhu for ourselves. Um, and then a final announcement is just that at the back, um, at the side, on the left hand side, um, there's many books that are there, so please do go and see them. There's Jankinath, the book on Jankinath Prabhu's life. Um, there's some of His Holiness Chandra Muli Maharaj's books and um, many other books that are there as well. So please do um, take, go look at them and, and take some with you if you can. Okay, we're... I just want to add that uh, we're working on a second book on Janakinath, which is a, compil a compilation of different eulogies and memories by devotees. So we uh, hope to have that out pretty soon. So that'll be the second book on Janakinath. We feel like we could, we should do more and more in that area of bringing his life to people in general. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Ask all the vice chancellors to prepare. We're chosen to be folded and stuff. Yeah, ask the two chancellors. Yeah. Jayanta Swami Nitti Namine It's okay. Huh? Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine 
nirvesesa sunyavadi paschatyade satarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sadi Gora Bhagda Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, everybody. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Tali palo, clap palo. Jai Jankina Prabhu, Jai Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Govinda Jaya Jaya, Gopala Jaya Jaya. Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna